By the time of the European discovery of the New World, there were possibly as many as 100 million Native Americans living in North, Central, and South America. These early inhabitants were primarily hunters and gatherers. However, the development of agriculture sparked new cultures and innovations. Corn, sun, and water became focal points for many societies and played strong roles in religious ceremonies. Some of the first sedentary societies of North America were created by groups known as the Mound Builders, who formed enormous earthworks into various shapes and sizes. The different shapes are thought to be religious signs or territorial markers for different tribes. As farming and fishing became more prevalent, people remained longer in one location and developed substantial dwellings. Clusters of mound builders settled in the Ohio Valley, along the Mississippi River, and as far west as present-day Oklahoma. In the Rio Grande Valley, the Pueblo people created complex irrigation systems to water their cornfields. The Anasazi, or ancient ones, carved into the sandstone cliffs complete cities with baked mud structures that towered four or five stories high. In what is now the northeastern United States lived members of the Iroquois Confederacy, comprised of five Indian nations, including the Seneca, the Oneida, the Onondaga, the Cayuga, and the Mohawk. The Indians, who also relied heavily on agriculture, accumulated and stored large quantities of food. This helped to decrease the threat of starvation, especially during the winter, and ultimately led to population growth, since more food was available and more hands were needed to cultivate and harvest the crops. Many Native American groups developed sophisticated planting techniques that allowed them to take full advantage of the land. One of the more unique procedures, called Three Sister Farming, involved a high-yielding strain of bean that grew on corn stalks, while squash grew at the base of the plant to help retain moisture in the soil. The Iroquois Confederacy was the largest political and military organization east of the Mississippi River. However, even as North American civilizations grew in population, sophistication, and power, they did not compare to the complex societies of the Aztecs and Incas in Central and South America. These vast empires included paved roadways and canals that linked smaller cities, aqueducts that carried fresh water to urban pools and fountains, and giant pyramids that rivaled in grandeur those found in Egypt. The Aztecs' political skills and military strength enabled them to expand beyond their capital city of Tenochtitlan. While they used their military might to conquer several regions, Aztec leaders also formed alliances with many groups and convinced them to serve the empire rather than risk bloodshed and war. In South America, the Inca Empire covered nearly 2,500 miles and included regions of present-day Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Argentina. The Incas were extremely intelligent engineers. They built huge stone structures without mortar and designed suspension bridges that crossed deep mountain valleys. The Inca Empire was essentially a coalition of tribes, much like that of the Aztec Empire. However, unlike the strong-handed rule of the Central American culture, the Incas allowed local groups to govern regions independently. Each tribe gave its allegiance to the ruler, called the Sapa Inca, whom they believed was the descendant of the sun god. In return for their cooperation, the people were treated well and accepted into the paternalistic Incan society. The majority of the Native Americans that inhabited South and North America respected their land and paid tribute to gods for bountiful harvests and protection. However, little did they know that their way of life would change drastically once European explorers set foot on the American continents. When the Native Americans first saw Columbus and his floating castles in 1492, they naively thought they were interacting with a god. That first meeting between the Europeans and Native Americans joined two very different worlds and started a historic chain of events that affected the lives of millions of people on both sides of the Atlantic. 
When Columbus and later explorers stepped foot on the rocky soil of the New World, they discovered a land unlike anything they had ever experienced. They encountered neatly patterned park-like settings in the middle of massive forests, caused by Native Americans burning and clearing out large areas of the forest to enhance their hunting efforts. The Spanish explorers saw strange creatures, including turkeys, llamas, iguanas, and rattlesnakes, which they colorfully described as snakes with castanets. Although they recognized the dog, they never imagined that anacondas, vampire bats, electric eels, or armadillos existed. The Old World explorers also enjoyed new plants and foods, including tobacco, tomatoes, potatoes, corn, squash, beans, peanuts, pineapples, and chocolate. In return, Columbus and subsequent European travelers introduced the Americas to many Old World foods and animals. Ships filled with cattle, sheep, pigs, and horses were dispatched to the Caribbean islands. Settlers planted wheat, sugar cane, peaches, bananas, and coffee, which thrived in the warm, sunny climate of the Spanish colonies. Other vegetation, including dandelions, clover, and Kentucky bluegrass, were also brought to the New World, most likely mixed in with different seeds. The exchange of plants and animals was generally well-received by people of both worlds. The Indians of Western North America quickly incorporated the horse into their culture and enhanced their proficiency as buffalo hunters and warriors. Many of the new crops became staples in the diets of the people of the New World and eventually provided a dependable source of income for the European settlers. In the Old World, new foods, especially potatoes, helped feed a rapidly growing population. The European explorers also took advantage of several Native American creations, including canoes, snowshoes, moccasins, and hammocks. And new words like teepee, skunk, moose, tomahawk, and chipmunk were adopted into European languages. Naturally, not all of the exchanges between the two worlds were positive. European voyagers brought with them pathogens that caused smallpox, measles, whooping cough, influenza, scarlet fever, and diphtheria. Outbreaks of smallpox and measles in particular often wiped out entire villages since Native Americans didn't have the antibodies to fight the deadly germs. The diseases killed or incapacitated so many Indians that they couldn't adequately defend their lands when the European invaders arrived. It is estimated that half the Aztec population died of smallpox during the Spanish conquest of Mexico. Close to 90% of Native Americans died after becoming infected with Old World diseases. Entire civilizations were eradicated with no descendants to carry on their unique cultures or philosophies. Although the Indians suffered more fatalities, European citizens did not entirely escape the threat of new disease. Many travelers who crossed the Atlantic contacted syphilis from the Native Americans and spread it throughout the European population. The exchange of animals, plants, and diseases transformed both American and European cultures forever.